Right, we're going to look at processing an NMR spectrum using ACD Labs 1M 1D NMR processor. We'll close this window, open the file. The files tend to have a number of experiments within a given one, so you could have one with proton, carbon, depth, het core, etc., different types of experiments. Uh, what we are interested in today is a Wittig NMR. We only acquired one, a proton NMR spectrum. In this we'll find a number of files. The one we are interested in is the FID. It stands for free induction decay, and we have a preview of that here. We open it up, and we see this uh, free induction decay. This is the raw data that we will need to process. We'll start by zero filling. We want the points count to be at least twice that of the original. So we'll click the up arrow twice, click OK, and now we Fourier transform the data and we convert it into something we recognize as an actual spectrum. Now we want to zoom in on the area that has peaks. We don't care about all the rest of this, so we click on this tool here that says horizontal zoom, and we click and drag. It will highlight some area. When we release, we're zoomed in on that particular area. Uh, we can zoom in further if you wish to look at a particular pattern. We can undo the last zoom with this key or we can go all the way back to the entire spectrum. I'm just going to step back one level. So this is our spectrum. Usually we want to have some uh, integration data and peak picking, although before we get to that one other thing to look at is the phasing. So I'm going to click the phase button here, puts us into phase mode. This spectrum is well phased, but I'm going to get a spectrum not so well phased. You can see here the peak is not symmetrical on the sides. You've got a distorted baseline. This is poorly phased. Uh, we can do mouse phasing and when we do that we have a red line. Use the left mouse button and you want to get the baseline level as well as possible near that red line. And then you go to an area far away and at this point we use the le uh, right mouse button and we phase the other end. An alternative is to try one of the three auto. The auto symmetric doesn't give us a very simple one. We can try this. Uh, gives us a nice baseline, auto simple. Usually at least one of these three automatic adjustments will give you a good uh, baseline. And so that's usually a good place to start. If you're happy with your results, you can click the green check mark, it gets you out of phasing mode, and accepts the changes. If you don't like what you've done, you can do the red X and it will get you out without applying any of the changes you've done. So we have a well phased spectrum. We'll go to peak picking. This allows us to put uh, the frequency of the various peaks, the chemical shift. The good place to start is the peak level. We click that and now we have a horizontal red line. Any peaks above that line when we click will be labeled with the chemical shift. And if we have the line too low we can just raise it again so each time you click it will reapply the peak picking based on where your uh, horizontal line is. You can supplement that if you don't want to have too many peaks, you can have a start with a high threshold and then come in and do peak by peak. And then here, for example, this peak is under the red cursor, does not have a label. I will just simply bring my cursor near it, click, and that is added. And then I could do that for each of the peaks that I want labels on, one by one, add those labels. And one thing I'll point out is if the pointer is above the peak, it does not label it. You have to be low enough and then all you have to do is be close. You don't have to be right on top of it and it will apply the label. If you don't want a particular peak labeled, click on it and it goes away. Click again and it brings it back. So this is a toggle. 
so we can turn off anything we don't want. Once you have the peak picking done, if you're happy with what you have, again accept changes, gets you out of peak picking. Next thing we'll look at is integration. Click on the integrate button and now to integrate a peak we will click and drag around a particular peak. So we'll set our cursor on one side, click, drag across and when we release we now have an integration written underneath. Uh, this value for some reason program defaults to very small values. We can change that by either clicking up or typing a value in here. So we could type 3 and then our integration is set to 3. We can integrate each peak in that fashion. One thing to note is here we have some impurities. We do not want to integrate those with the doublet, so we want to be careful to start just on the side of the doublet, not including that impurity when we integrate. And then we'll come down this end and integrate these peaks as well. One thing to notice is that our quartets here are fairly well separated, and so we could potentially integrate each one separately instead of integrating them as a group. It'll be easier if we zoom in, so we can click on the horizontal zoom button again, zoom in, and now it'll be easier to do our integration. We do need to leave zoom, so we click on that again to exit zoom, and then click and drag to do the integrations. And then again we can back out of our last zoom and we see all of the integrations. If we're happy we can accept changes and exit. If you want to delete a particular one, unclick manual. So now we have nothing selected up here. At this point we can select a particular integration just by clicking on it and we can change the value. So if we want this peak, for example, to be set to 2, we could simply type 2 in here, and now that peak is set to 2 and everything else is adjusted accordingly. We can also click and delete and integrate an integral there. Uh, go back to manual. Of course, we do want this one, so we're going to reintegrate and bring that back accept our changes. So we now have an integrated uh, spectrum with peak picking. One other option I will show is under options, preferences, we can select to uh, have our integrate integrals uh, reported to a particular number of decimal places. I have it defaulting to two and that's probably a good value. There's really no need to have any more uh, decimal places than two. And also you can choose to have your integrals written either horizontally in this fashion or vertically. The problem with horizontal is the numbers can tend to run together. So I prefer to have horizontal. Likewise with peaks, you can choose the number of decimal places. <clears throat> The minimum you should choose is three decimal places since we will want to be able to calculate coupling constants for the uh, cis and trans peaks, the vanillic uh, hydrogens. So three or four is fine. And again, we can do vertical or horizontal. And we will stick with the uh, vertical so we don't have numbers running into each other. Click OK. And we have our spectrum. At this point, we can edit copy to clipboard the spectrum. And as you can see, you could also just click uh, Control C. And you can then open a Word document. Probably the best layout would be to have the orientation in landscape. But we can then edit and paste and have our document then in a Word document so it's easy to incorporate into your reports. And also easy to print out and analyze. So we have that saved as well. At this point you can close it, although you also have the option of saving the uh, spectrum, and I'm going to save it. This is ESP is the native format for ACD uh, Spectrum Manager. 
So we'll save it. it. Tells me I've already have that name. We'll go ahead and overwrite. But the nice thing here is I can close this, and when I reopen it, let's go back to that folder. It has all of the processing that I've done. I can zoom in, and again I can go in at this point. I can add peaks if there's something I missed or something I don't want. I can go in and get rid of peaks or add peaks in. I can change my integration, etc., but I don't have to start from scratch if I've saved that ESP file. And that is the NMR processing. Very simple and straightforward.